just like to say how good it is to be in the house of the Lord and there's no other place I would rather be than in the house of the Lord. And I know we're living in weary times and dangerous times and the enemy tries to wear out the saint and, and we're going through and we're going through. You know, but on the way here I was thinking about a saying that I've heard. I don't think it's biblical, but it says, people say, well, whatever don't kill you makes you stronger. So you might be wondering, like, wh why are you going through the trial that you're facing? You know, why, why does it go, it go away, Brother Lynn? Why do I have to keep going through this, these things that we go through? But God is definitely making us stronger. So I don't know about you, but I want to do, like the brother said, I want to be a genuine and not a counterfeit. Because there is a counterfeit. But you know, there's a genuine, and I want to get a hold of that. And how many of us here want to get a hold of that? I mean, because we know it's real, and we know God hasn't changed, so it's us that got to meet that requirement. But Sister Jan, I don't know about you, but I want to get a hold of it. I want to get a hold of the genuine power of the true and living God, where when we pray, things happen. And when we pray, it's to no avail. I want to pray. I want to see an answer to the prayer. But I thank God that he answered a prayer today. And my aunt was sick, and I called her. I didn't know she was sick, and she was crying, and she said she was sick. And I was near her house, and I said, well, the Lord pricked my heart and said, go by and pray for her. Well, you know, I was like, okay, Lord, I will. So I told her, and she said, okay. Well, I thought in my mind, well, I'm going to call Kenneth, and I'm going to have him help us pray, Sister uh, Gurley. But the Lord pricked my heart again, and he said, why don't you have faith, and why don't you pray? And don't depend on Brother Kenneth, you know, to get a prayer through every time. And so that's what I was going to do, Brother Lynn. And so, uh, but my aunt said, well, let's get Robert to help, you know, my uncle. And I said, okay. So we, we got him to help pray, and then by that time I said, well, I'm going to call Kenneth and get him to help pray too. But he didn't answer the phone. But see, God was trying to teach me something. So I uh, couldn't get a hold of uh, Brother Kenneth at that time. So anyway, we went to praying for Aunt Pat. She was real sick and nauseous. And we prayed and prayed and prayed, and the Spirit of the Lord was quickening her. And then she stood up and praised the Lord, and then she said, it's almost gone. It's just a little bit left that she was felt nauseous. So Uncle Robert said, well, let's just pray some more. So we prayed some more, and she went to shouting and speaking in tongues, and she said, it's all gone. And, you know, that's the genuine. That's the God, not anything we did, but that's the God that we serve. And we can get that prayer through. You know, if we will do our best for the Lord, he will hear and answer prayer. I, I don't even know how to express what I'm trying to say, but I believe in the latter days, God is going to be more real than he was in the former days. If we will pray and seek his face, Sister Gurley, and get a hold of God, he will be more real and more powerful to us in the last day than in the former days. But what have we got to do? we got some work to do. And we're not going to get it done, and I don't know why I'm saying all this, but we're not going to get it done sitting around with a remote control flipping from channel to channel. And I'm not against watching television. But my point is, is we're not going to get anything done for God on the seat of do nothing, on the seat of laziness, on the seat of, of idleness. You know, but if we will get in our prayer closet and do what the Bible says, pray without ceasing, pray and seek God and fast and read the word and fill our minds with the word and with songs of Zion, there's no telling. I, be, I feel it in my soul tonight. There's no telling what God might do. Oh, I mean, there's just no telling what he's going to do, Sister Darley. And this morning, I thank God by faith, I believe God is healing Sister Garley of that cough. By faith, I thank God for that cough is going to be gone. And I thank him for some more things I've been
been praying for. Because our God is a prayer answering God. All we got to do is get in touch with him. How do we get in touch with him? Through Jesus Christ. Through the door. There's the door. Through Jesus Christ. And if you're out there today and you don't know Jesus Christ, I beg of you just to call upon him. I challenge you to speak the name of Jesus. If you'll speak the name of Jesus, something is going to happen. Demons tremble at that name. I said demons tremble at that name. Not at the name of Kim. Not at the name of Sister Garley. Not at the name of Brother Robert, Brother Kenneth, and Brother Staten right there, Sister Jan, Brother Lynn. But at the name of Jesus, things are going to happen. Demons are going to tremble. And every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess at the name of Jesus. And I just want to give him all the glory, all the honor. I know a man named Jesus that can heal your body and that can save your soul. If you'll just give him a try. I'll try to sing another song if the Lord be willing. Well, King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. Oh, King Without the name of Jesus, I wouldn't even be here today. I wouldn't even be sitting on this bench right here, Sister Jan, because when I was a little girl, and I don't know exactly how old I was, maybe six years old or somewhere in that neighborhood, my dad was an alcoholic, and he would sometimes snap in his mind. And um, he loved me, and I was uh, very close to him, but Satan had got a hold of him one day, and he tried to kill me. And um, I'm just going to tell you, without the hand of a true and a living God, I wouldn't be sitting right here. But I was crying to my mother because I knew that my dad was trying to kill me. And uh, he had a knife, and he, and he had it up to my heart, and he was about to put it in. I mean, he was putting, applying pressure. So I was crying to my mama, Mama, you know, help me. And my mama didn't know what to do because she knew what kind of man my daddy was. But you know, the anointing of the Holy Ghost come down upon mama, you know, and she was a genuine, like you said. That was the genuine. The anointing fell on my mother. And she went to singing in the, in the next room and praising God and shouting across that floor. And my dad came to his right mind. The, the true and living God spoke to him and said, Thou shalt not kill. And he threw the knife down and come to his senses and said, What am I doing? I'm killing my baby. When all along another voice had spoken to him to kill me. And he thought it was God. Well, that's just how the devil operates when you're not a Christian. Now, if you're a Christian, something like that's not going to happen to you because you know the voice of the true God. But without God, I wouldn't be here. But I want to give God all that I've got, 
all that he's given me, I want to give it back to him tonight. And I just want to sing one more song right quick. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Slowly but holy, taking control. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. Girly, I turn let me say something while Lynn's a coming. I'll just get right here by, by Kim. This will be okay. You know, we want the power that the apostles had, that the disciples had. We want to be able to lay our hands on the sick and them get well. We want to be able to pray for people and them get saved. Let me just challenge us Christians today. You know what the disciples did? They prayed three times a day. Amen. They went to the temple and prayed three times a day. You remember over in Daniel when they made the decree that they couldn't call on any other god but King Darius, so they couldn't pray to him. Daniel's windows being opened toward Jerusalem, right. he knelt down and prayed three times a day. Thank you, Jesus. You know why he prayed toward Jerusalem? Because when Solomon dedicated the, the temple, he said, if our people get carried off into a strange land, into captivity, if they'll just pray toward this land, if they'll just pray toward this house, so, then you hear from heaven, and God said he would. If they yes, would offer God. themselves and they would pray and they would quit doing things they're not supposed to do, yes. if we'll humble ourselves and we'll pray and we'll go ahead and live good for the Lord, me, there's God. no reason why we can't get people healed. Yes. There's no reason why we can't get our prayers answered. Me, I challenge you, I challenge us that's right here in this room right. to pray three times a day. Amen. Go ahead and talk to the Lord three times a day. And you may not be where you can get down on your knees, but you can talk to the Lord. Yes. I don't know about you. Tell yes. the Lord, 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 Lord. I can talk to the Lord anywhere, any time Glory of day be to God. because he's with me. Lord, he said, I'm, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to be with you wherever you go. Hey, I'm not going anywhere that God can't go. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going anywhere that Jesus won't go with me. We can talk to him wherever we are. 
I get some of my best blessings riding down the road in the car of praising God and talking to him. And I can just see people passing by and they think, that poor little woman, she just got troubled. She's crying her eyes out. They don't know. They just don't know that I'm having a talk with the Heavenly Father and he's having a talk with me. Yes, Let me yep, challenge you. Pray three times a day. We're fixing to have some healing services here in the barn, and we're fasting. We're yes. praying. We're going to start praying three times a day. Amen. And if you've got a prayer request, uh, you want to send it in, we'll pray for you. We'll pray over the barrel all the time and for the request. But if you can, you need to get here. It's going to be the fourth Sunday night to of every month we're going to be here with a healing service. So, and you know what? When Jesus healed people, they didn't send somebody with the message of, Lord, I can't come today, but would right. you just heal me? They went to where Jesus was. Yes. And you may say, I can get healed in my church. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. But if you can't, you get somewhere where somebody's fasting and praying, yes. and they're praying three times a day. I don't care if my children get saved over yonder, over here, or out right. there, just so they get saved. Amen. All we want to do is Glory just bless somebody. You, We're Jesus. not here for competition. That's right. We're here, Brother Robert and us are working for the same one. That's right. We're working for the same master yes, to get people you, healed, uh, to get people saved. Uh, we claim in revival in traffic. Yes, amen. I don't care if it comes to Brother Robert's church, to the right. church of God, or the Baptist church, right. or the barn. Amen. We just want people saved. Amen. If you want your people saved, just come on over and join in with us. We're going to be out on the streets of Trafford at 6 o'clock on Friday night till the weather runs us inside. Thank you, Lord. But we need some singers. We need some Holy Ghost-filled people to come out there and help us fight the devil. Yes, you know, it's God. a little different when you're out on the street. Uh, I can remember sitting up down there one time, and it was just beginning to get dark, and the ball game was on. And this voice came out of the dark. Don't start that mess out there. Now I'm watching the ball game. I'd hate to have stand before God. I'd hate to stand before God to let... Know that a ball game come between me and the Lord. Right. I'm not totally against them, uh, but I'm not totally for them either. That's and right. if you let that come between That's you right. and the Lord, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. If you call your church services off for a ball game, you're not in the will of the Lord. You can turn this dial if you want to. You can turn us off right. if you want to. But you can't turn Jesus off. That's right. He'll you be there. He'll be talking to you. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to live right. If we're going to get people saved, we're going to have to live right ourselves. Amen. Help we're going to have to walk right. Help me you God. can't live one way in church uh, and get out in the world and live another way like Brother Robert was talking about. Right. Hey, if we don't live it all the time, what if Jesus comes at one of them times we're not living right? Right. What if he calls us home Help even if God. he don't come and we're not ready to go? If you have a bad car wreck, you may not have time to straighten things out. That's right. Now's the time you need to be saved. Amen. Now's the time you need to straighten everything out and get yes. ready to go yes. to heaven. We want you to go with us. Sir. We're looking for you to go with us. Sir. Hold on to the Lord. Sir. If you're saved, by all means, stay saved. If you're not saved, it's time to get saved. Amen. It's time to call on the Amen. Lord. He's waiting on you. You can hang around all you want to, but the Lord's going to come, and you're going to be left behind if you're not Help ready to go. Ready. That's why ready. we're on the air, to tell somebody Jesus loves them. You're not in so much sin that he can't take care of you. You've not done so much that he won't forgive you and wrap his arms around love around you and let you know that he cares. Why not be saved tonight? Why not be saved today? Just hold on to the Lord. Look to Jesus. Uh, now, come on, Brother Lynn. He's going to sing. And 
I'm going to sit down for a while, maybe. But I'm going to praise the Lord anyway. Thank you, Come on, Jesus. brother. Thank you, Lord. I just thank the Lord for letting us be here one more time. And we want to encourage you to come out to the barn and join us and uh, as we worship the Lord. And just have a good time with us, Brother Lynn. Yeah, I kind of caught on my spirit, you know, Sister Bobby talking about, you know, everything happening in the world and everything. And if you're saved, stay saved. And if you ain't saved, you need to get saved. And you can cut the news on this day and time. And Sister Jan, every day somebody's either getting killed or mistreated or whatever. Even the policemen are being taken out and... I was thinking about this morning, you know, God worked a miracle a few weeks back and I'm able to run now. And uh, Brother uh, Kenneth, I was on the walking track this morning about daylight. And I'll be, if a, if a guy didn't start walking the track that had a demonic spirit about him and started talking ungodly language and all that, and, and, and I told him, I said, hey, I said, keep it down. I said, I, I said this is a public place. And I said, you're talking filth and ungodly language and stuff like that. And before I even could catch myself, Sister Bobby, I said, I'm a man of God and I don't want to hear that. You know what I mean? And then I thought, well, you know, that was a bold statement. And I was kind of surprised myself. But then the Holy Spirit told me, Brother Robert, you know, the world will mistreat us Christians and walk all over us. Talk to us just any old way. Use God's name in vain. Talk about Jesus Christ and, and even blaspheming the Holy Ghost and all this other stuff. We as Christians, we need to stand up for the Lord. Amen. You know, it's time that we don't... we get Come on out of the shadows. And I'm saying, if you're a Christian that's in the closet, come on out of the closet and tell people, hey, I'm a born-again child of God. Tell people that, the, you know, if they're lost, they're going to die and go to de heaven's... Uh, the devil's hell. I'll be honest about it. It's time we as Christians quit candy coating things over. And even some churches this day and time, I know when you ask the preacher, it's supposed to be singing, and, I, and I'll try to us. But if you don't tell anybody about Jesus Christ and they die and go to hell, it's on you. But I'm going to shut up and I'm going to sing his song. And this is for every minister here in this and every Christian here in this. And y'all listen to this song because it's got a message just for you and we need to obey what it says. There is peace and contentment in my Father's house today. Lots of food on the table. No one is turned away. And there's singing and there's laughter as the hours pass by. But a heart comes a singing as the Father sat. He cries, Oh, my house, my house is full, but my fields, they're so empty. Who will go work for me today? It seems my children all they want to feast at my table. But tell me who will go and work in my fields, push away. From the table, look out through the window pane. Just beyond this house 
a plenty. There lies a field of golden grain, and it's ripe unto harvest. But the reapers, where are they? In my house, count my children. But here the father said, Please say, my house is so full, my fields, they are so empty, who will go work for me today, it seems my chill. Grand all want to feast at my table. Tell me, will you go and work in my fields? Not much time left for working. It's time for the harvest. So won't you go and work? Please go and work in my fields. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I just came from the hospital before I came here and not going to go into too, too many details but I just saw Norma hardly know she's in the world of all the people I love most in the whole world it would be her and like brother Robert said tonight don't be a hypocrite and don't be don't be playing Christian don't be playing church. Don't be playing minister, preacher, evangelist, or whatever. You better be up and about the Father's business. Amen. Yeah. Don't put God on the shelf because there come a time, Brother Kenneth, when you need your God. Yeah. And you ain't got time to pray back to and start off from scratch, Brother Bill, and get in touch with Him once again because you ain't got that much time. You got somebody, fit, the possibility may be leaving this walks of life. And I say, oh my Lord, touch him and heal him. But if you don't, take him on home with you, Jesus. Be better off in a better place. And I told somebody a while ago, after I'd done burst down and crying three or four times, and just be honest with you, losing it. I said, my God, you know the situation. You know me, Jesus. Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, you know who I am. You know the situations, and I'm calling on you, God.